Saints in any Timberwolves game scored 23 threes. Mm -hmm. Is this exactly the night that the offense really needed to get going here? Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's a night that uh, when you make two out of every three shots, you know, you're going to score a lot of points, particularly if a lot of them are threes. So you know, I've just been really pleased with the quality of shots we've been able to generate over the last few games. Um, you know, and then that kind of sparks a rhythm and guys can kind of feel where the shot may come from. And, you know, they're, they're shooting with a lot of confidence, you know. Um, you know, so yeah, we talked about getting up more more threes, and we've been trying to do that tonight. Was obviously an exaggerated example of it. So. You talked about the injuries and how that presents opportunities to some other guys to step up. How yeah. do you feel like Nate Knight has embraced I mean, that opportunity? It's been great. Everybody's really stepped up. You know, Nas stepped up into the role, then he goes down. Nate stepped up. Luca gave us great minutes, particularly in his second shift out there in the third. Um, uh, you know. Everybody's everyone's really played well for us. You know, Bryn I thought played well too. He's been playing well. So, do you think Ant kind of being forced in a situation where he had to play make for others, I don't know, turned on a light where that can maybe be a more consistent thing moving forward? I, you know, sometimes when you're, you know, you've been he's been trapped a lot or or they've been up on him in pick and roll. You know, it forces you to pass, forces you to see the floor, it forces you to change kind of your mindset about, um, you know, where your teammates are. Um, I think he's doing a really good job of understanding where his teammates are early in the possession and then puts pressure on the defense and can make the pass later. Um, you know, he's really filling up a stat sheet right now. Like the other night, he was he had 11 rebounds and, and, and seven assists, and tonight's the opposite, but, you know, the, um, just doing it all. Did it feel good to deliver a performance at home um, that fans could kind of have fun with throughout, given some of the other games that have happened here this year? Uh, yeah, well. For sure. <laughs> um, you know, we haven't played well at home. We just haven't. But we've played better at home the last few times we've played. Um, and just, again, this is one of the quirkiness of any, every team has its own idiosyncrasies. But, um, you know, we've said long, this is a great sports town. You just you, you got to give them a reason to come out and cheer for you. And I think we're doing a better job of that, you know. What did you like defensively in the fourth quarter that really seemed to kind of create that separation? I thought we did a better job as the fourth quarter went on of defending without fouling as much. You know, we started out a lot of little fouls uh, and rebounding. You know, we rebounded well. Um, Chris, it's kind of rare that a team has five big centers. How have you kind of approached that this season of, like, keeping them engaged? Because when guys have come in, it yeah. does seem like they've taken that opportunity. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I think I said it um, pregame to you – know, I think Nas is a great example of like just staying ready. Uh, he's played every role from the third five to the fourth f four or whatever, you know, to a starter to a couple DMPs at times, um, you know, and he's just stayed ready. Um, we have great flexibility in our roster. We felt that we had that, you know, um, even even throughout, you know, times when we had the more traditional big lineup. So we have, we still have flexibility just being able to get all those guys opportunity. But, you know, um, yeah, and then um, just you know, we were able to, like, just kind of, you know, the depth helped right now. I mean, that's why you do it. So, you know. And then with D'Angelo, I mean, this this past month, the, the shooting yeah. is, is kind of the next level. He is one of those players who kind of goes in these bursts. Like, as a coach, do you try and, like, foster that happening? Like, knowing that if he's hit a couple, like, he is one of those guys who can kind of – yeah, I oh, mean, well. yeah, I mean, I try to like, you know, to within reason, try to hide, ride the hot hand, you know, leave guys in when they're in a groove, um, you know, but he was just coming back from a couple of days out, you know, and I had unfortunately had took him out right at the end of a couple of really good runs that he was having. And, you know, it took us a little while to find our rhythm. Then Ant got going when he left, the, when D'Lo left the floor. So generally, like I, I kind of try to leave that latitude uh, to be able to, to do that. The, the, the single biggest thing, key for for D'Angelo and me is, is the shooting. It's just like it, he's not thinking about it; he's just letting it fly. It's just it, it's clean, it's quick. He's, he's shooting with a ton of confidence. He's getting great looks. His dribble threes are are good ones too, um, in a good rhythm. And that's the thing he's changed the most. You know, less hesitancy. You have um, Cat and. And Rudy are both players that need to be fed whenever they're on the court. Yeah. Um, and Jaden and.
Kyle don't to some extent, the fact that you have guys in the backcourt that really can get their own without worrying about the way things are supposed to work. Do you think that helps both Ant and D'Lo right now? I mean, I know yeah. D'Lo has said earlier in the year feeding guys became a little bit too pre too much of a preoccupation. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it certainly has helped them find the rhythm, you know, the rhythm together, the rhythm individually. And, you know, I thought um, uh, from the beginning of the season, like, the, you know, you've heard me say, like, the, the two bigs have, when they played together, they had their own rhythm. And the guards now have found a rhythm. And now the key is, you know, when we all get back together and, you know, we just we got to marry it up. But, um, you know, and I think also we're, we, we can learn some lessons with our spacing. You know, we didn't come into the season intentionally trying to make Cat just a corner spacer, but I do believe there's we have to take way more advantage of his shooting and just maybe parking him in in the corner a little bit more at times. Um, but you know, having said that, you know we we fed those we fed Nate Knight and those guys roll into the hoop all night long. So we got to be able to do it all. You know, I think we got complementary skill sets out there that should allow us to take advantage of that. But it seems like the key is. It isn't overly deliberate that you guys are able to play more yeah. in a like a natural flow, yeah. and both Dilo and and Ant feel like they're not betraying anything if they just decide they're going to go for theirs. Yeah, I think I mean they're you know they're both aggressive scorers in their own right, but they're also playmaking at a high level. Um, you know, some of that's dictated. I think defenses like are making choices that are we're kind of uh, recognizing and taking advantage of right now. I I. Uh, you know, the, I think it also starts with them and trusting that the ball does come back to them enough, you know, and, and we have to make sure that that does so because they have to give it up and initiate a lot of offense. So this kind of parallels what happened last year around this time of year where you had a bunch of guys out. Yeah. Offense played really well with reserves stepping up into bigger roles. Is there maybe something about whether it's this number of games played in a season where you can figure some things out or just I mean, getting every, a different look also maybe helps with yeah, when guys I mean, eventually come back. Everywhere I've ever been, like offensively, certainly when you have a new group, mm -hmm. it takes about 20 to 25 games. It just does. Um, you know, when you have an existing group, you obviously you should be, you know, uh, quicker out of the gate when it comes to that. Um, what, you know, these what it, ha what it shows you is that we're not holding the ball very as much. You know, we have less ball stoppers on the floor at any given time and now we can see the rhythm of the offense and I'm a big believer of you got to see the rhythm of the offense we we watch a ton of film where we play well you know um, because we play with a lot of freedom and randomness but you have to feel that and see that and I think when guys see it and it you know see how much uh, fun it is and how you know their, their teammates can help too you know I think it's it it, it hopefully breeds like some momentum in the offense. Yeah. You, you kind of touched on it earlier and with that answer, but you, you speak often of guys having to trust, you have trust in the offense yeah. that the ball is going to come back around. Do you sense a growing trust among, among I these do, guys? I now? do. I do absolutely sense a growing trust. I also sense a, a growing sen uh, sense of accountability. Guys know when they've like taken bad shots and they should have moved it on and stuff like that. You know, so they're, they're doing, and, it, and then those things happen. That's basketball, but it, it comes from a, a, a way more genuine place. So. Just curious if you heard anything on Nas. Uh, no, I didn't really. I mean, I some sort of like trap muscle or something like that. I don't know. So, so are you oh. kind of hoping for the similar effect that literally did come from that COVID period last year? I mean, I'm hoping for winning. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> like, the same effect of like I mean, yeah. the way offense moved and everything. Yeah, That's exactly yeah. what you described, basically. Yeah, exactly. Then. I mean, you know, see, seeing us play well like that and putting a lot of things in, you know, on video where we can like learn and teach from. Um, you know, there's a lot of parallels to last year, like the rhythm of the season, but the teams are so different, you know. So, but to your point, yeah, no doubt. So. And Chris, I, th I think you guys shot something like 77% on two pointers tonight yeah. um, and, and moved really, really well without the basketball. Mm -hmm. What do you think um, about that cutting specifically you can look at tonight and really try to take with you um, into this next week or so? Yeah, I thought uh, you know, I thought our spacing was outstanding. It opened up a lot of interior opportunities for us, whether we were rolling or whether we were cutting. Or early on, when you know we first started to get going, and you know was driving, and it did a really good job of driving to the hoop. And um, so, yeah, you know, um, 
I mean, that's where we want. We want to go there first. We're trying to get to the rim first. So, thanks, guys. Thank you.